All right. Hello, everybody. I want to thank you all for showing up today. If you're attending this webinar, you are probably a busy student or a busy professional. So I know that your time is valuable. Um, so I have a lot of information for you guys today. Um, we have about 30 minutes together. My piece is going to take about 20 to 25 minutes and we'll have a few minutes at the end to um, answer any questions that you might have. Uh, I do ask that for the duration of this webinar that you keep yourself on mute and you can leave your video off. And if you have any questions, you can use the chat function um, uh, to ask any questions that you have. So first, let's uh, introduce ourselves. So my name is Michelle and I'm the founder of MSW Helper. I specialize in working with MSW applicants to create strong personal statements for grad school. Um, if you haven't been to my website yet, be sure to do so because I have lots of helpful resources and tips for you guys. So back when I applied, I remember feeling incredibly stressed out about applying to my Master of Social Work. Um, it was a super busy semester in my last year of school and I was juggling placement, classes, volunteer commitments, work, um, as well as getting multiple applications with multiple personal statements, you know, references, all kinds of things. And then, you know, also trying to sleep and get in, you know, have a social life and do everything else that I needed to do. So um, I know some of you guys are probably in the thick of it right now and totally understand what I mean when I say that. Um, I wish that there was someone that I could talk to and get guidance from, but I found that there wasn't really anybody who understood the um, intricacies of social work. Social work is a small field, but it is quite competitive to get into the master's program. So basically, I became the person that I wished that I had at the time. Um, and over the years, I've helped hundreds of MSW applicants go from, you know, being unsure about themselves to increasing their confidence in the personal statement. And I can help you no matter what stage you're at in the application process. So I would love to know who's here today. So um, in the chat, can you uh, comment your name and what school you're applying to? Okay. Welcome, Sophie. Welcome, Chelsea. Hello, everybody. Okay, so I'm seeing lots of people from TMU, from Lakehead. Lots of people are applying to lots of different schools. So I know you guys are probably busy. University of Manitoba. A couple of people undecided. Awesome. Welcome everyone. Um, and one thing I will say is you might see a lot of people from the same school. Um, don't worry, that's not, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's more people applying to your school. Not every school uh, sent out the flyers, so there might be some over-representation um, from different schools. Awesome. Welcome everybody. So uh, as a thank you for attending this webinar today, I did want to um, uh, tell you about an offer that, that I can give you for today. So if you sign up to work with me before midnight tonight, you're going to get a copy of my digital guide and workbook. The digital guide is something I usually sell for $30, and it's basically a uh, it goes into more detail of what we're going to be touching on today. In this short webinar, I really can only pick out a few important pieces. And the digital guide is a tool to help you really figure out what you want to say. So yeah, if you order with me today, you're going to get this for free. The caveat, though, is that this offer is only available until midnight. And after that, it's no longer available. If you're coming into this knowing already that you were planning to work with me, but your personal statement isn't ready, um, you can submit your order anyways, and then I will send you the digital guide and you can send me your personal statement whenever you're ready. Um, so that would work out really nice because then you can use the digital guide to really come up with a plan. And when you send your personal statement to me, it's already gonna be um, like ahead of the curve in terms of quality. 
So yeah, if you're interested, you can go to my website and submit your order. So today we are going to be talking about what schools of social work are looking for, um, some traps to avoid, next steps, and then we'll talk about your questions at the end. Okay, so if you are applying to your Master of Social Work, you might be worried about your application. And I get it, MSW programs are disproportionately competitive. Uh, social work is a small field, but it's a growing field, and I don't think the demand has caught up to like the space that's available in grad schools. Um, and when I applied to my master's, I often found myself comparing my grades and my experience to other people to see kind of where I ranked compared to, to other people who are applying. Um, I've been doing this for quite a while now, and what I can tell you is that it really doesn't matter what anybody else's grades or experience is like. I have seen people with low grades get accepted to the program. I've seen people with almost no experience get accepted to the program. And on the flip side, I've also seen people with really amazing grades and lots of experience get rejected from the program. And the reason for that is because um, schools of social work are looking for your ability to think critically and your potential contribution to the field of social work. Um, and this is actually more important than your skills and experience. And you can use the personal statement to show the admissions committee your critical thinking skills, even if you don't have the most experience. Um, so because of that, you don't need to worry about other people's experience and grades. And honestly, it's true. Like I have seen people who have, you know, on paper, a really good experience and grades, but because they're not able to demonstrate their critical thinking skills, um, they haven't gotten in or, or the other side, people who don't have the best grades or the best ex or the most experience are able to do so. Um, so yeah, that's why the person, I feel strongly that the personal statement is the most important part about the MSW application. Okay, so schools of social work are generally looking for a few key areas. Each school might have some slight variations in like what they're asking for, but in general, I find that most schools are looking for um, your personal experiences that inspired you to pursue social work. So things like your life, your professional experiences, your academic experience, things like that and then a discussion of a social problem and how social workers can work towards solving that problem. In addition, most schools of social work are assessing your personal statement for things like your ability to communicate clearly and your evidence of critical thinking, um, your potential contribution to an area of interest, and the complement between social work and your professional goals. So, I want you guys to take a look at these two sample personal statements and tell me which, which applicant you think is going to have a stronger personal statement. So person A, for their experience, they work in a women's shelter. For their social problem, they're gonna be discussing child welfare. And for their goal, they're going to be discussing the fact that they want to pursue an MSW so that they can get a job at the hospital. Personal, uh, person, personal statement B, they work at a women's shelter as well. And for the social problem, they're going to be discussing an issue that they saw at the women's shelter. And their goal is to pursue a master of social work so that they can address an issue, address that issue in a different capacity. So maybe at the macro level. So based on what you see here, who do you think is going to have a stronger personal statement? Let me know in the chat. Awesome. So I am seeing lots of people saying that personal statement B is going to have the stronger personal statement. And with that, I would totally agree with you. As an applicant, you want to create cohesion between your experience, your goals, and the social justice problem. Um, this is going to show the reader your strong critical thinking skills and your potential contribution to an area of practice. You can also see that applicant B is discussing a specific issue that they saw at the women's shelter. Whereas, you know, the person in personal statement A, they've just listed child welfare. So we don't know 
um, like they haven't even identified like an actual social justice issue. They've just if they've just mentioned an area of practice. Um, the other thing I find is that in personal statement A, um, the applicant comes off as a little bit more self-serving, right? They're saying, I want to pursue a master of social work so that I can get a job at the hospital. Whereas um, the person in personal statement B is talking about how they can contribute to the field and you know, work with their population in a more effective way. Um, so like I said, you want to think about your goals, experience, and the social justice issue in a cohesive way. And that's something that um, I can help you with. And if you um, get the digital guide or anything else, like that's an area that I really focus on. Okay, so let's talk about um, demonstrating evidence of critical and analytical thinking. So there's a couple ways that you can be strategic about doing this. Um, the first is to understand what social work actually is. This might sound obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people apply to their master of social work and they don't actually have like a full understanding of what social work entails. Um, so one thing I suggest that you think about is how do social workers help people and how is social work different from other helping professions? A lot of people will say, oh, well, I want to be a social worker because I want to help people. Well, if you wanted to help people, why are you choosing social work and not nursing? Why are you choosing social work and not becoming a police officer or a therapist or like a psychologist? What is it about social work that interests you and will allow you to help people in a way that um, would be meaningful for you? Um, number two is know your why. So this kind of goes back to talking about how you can contribute to the field of social work and being really cohesive in your answers between your like experience, a problem that you saw, and how you are going to use your master's degree to contribute to the field of social work. Number three is to connect theory to practice. So if you are applying for the two-year program, that means you don't have a Bachelor of Social Work already and you're coming from a different undergraduate degree. If that's the case for you, I would say that this is um, not expected and like admissions committees won't be looking for you to do this. Um, but if you can try and, and, um, and do it, then you know that's definitely like a good way to stand out. If you are an advanced standing applicant, meaning you have a Bachelor of Social Work, there's going to be some expectation that you're going to be able to do this. So when you're writing your personal statement and talking about the social justice issue, think about the, like, the theories that you learned in school and how that applies to the social justice problem that you're discussing. Um, now, what I'm not, I'm not saying you need to be listing and like defining theories, but you know, think about which ones apply and try to weave it into like the framework of your personal statement. So, for example, if you're talking about a social justice problem, maybe you'll talk about an issue you saw while you were working there and connect it back to like the macro or institutional level and the barriers that people experience. And by doing that, you would be kind of demonstrating your knowledge of like ecological systems theory, for example. Um, and then finally, use research to back up your points. A lot of people overlook the fact that the Personal statement is an opportunity for you to showcase your academic writing skills. And when you're able to use research to back up your points related to the social justice issue, you're gonna demonstrate two things. One, you're gonna demonstrate your ability to apply evidence-based practice as a social worker. And two, you're gonna um, show the admissions committee your research skills since you are applying to an academic program after all. Okay. So the other thing that schools are looking for are your ability to communicate clearly. So admissions committees read literally hundreds of personal statements each year. And knowing that, it's probably pretty safe to assume that they're doing a lot of skimming in your personal statement. So knowing that, we want to make sure that you're 
MSW application is as skimmable as possible. So you're going to want to make sure that you are using headings that align with the questions being asked so that the reader can easily find your answers. Um, you're going to want a really strong introduction and conclusion. And you're going to want to make sure that you are being concise and getting rid of like filler sentences and really making sure that you are answering the questions that are being asked in chronological order. Um, another way to uh, demonstrate your communication skills is to treat your personal statement like an academic writing sample. So again, because even though it's, um, you know, a personal statement and you're talking about like your experience and your goals, it's also an opportunity for you to showcase your writing ability. And one really easy way to do that is to use APA formatting in your personal statement. So I usually recommend that applicants do things like add a title page, um, make sure you're using 12 point uh, Times New Roman, double spacing, uh, running head page numbers, all those kinds of things. Um, and then yes, tell a story and stand out from the crowd. So again, because they're reading so many personal statements, you want to try to make it as you know, you want to like stand out at, from like the, the noise, right? So I often will recommend things like making sure that you have like a hook and that you are being story-like in your responses. The personal statement is meant to be the story of who you are, like where you come from and your goals and where you're going in the future. And uh, the last piece that I want to talk about in terms of communication is the elevator pitch. So when you work with me, this is an area that we really work on. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with what an elevator pitch is, the idea is that you're in an elevator with somebody and you're trying to convince them of something in the amount of time that it takes you to ride an elevator. It's usually used in like marketing and business, but it definitely applies to the personal statement as well. So at the beginning and the end of the personal statement, you should be able to summarize your experience, goals, and social justice issue in a cohesive and concise manner, usually in about two to three sentences. That way the reader is going to basically know everything that they need to know from the very beginning of your personal statement. And at the end, they're going to have like a lasting impression of, okay, like I understand who this person is and like what their goals are. Okay, so here are some other traps and things to avoid. So one is not following basic instructions. If there is a word count or a page limit, make sure you're following all of those to a T. Not doing so is a really easy way for your personal statement to get weeded out for like a silly reason. Uh, number two is not treating your personal statement like an academic writing sample. So again, you want to really make sure that you um, are treating it with the same level of professionalism like you would in, a, in like a formal essay. Uh, number three is not giving yourself enough time. So, um, uh, you know, the, all I'll, I'll say about that is this is one of the most important pieces of writing that you're probably going to ever create. So you want to make sure that you are really giving yourself the time to really think through what you want to say. Uh, not keeping yourself uh, organized in the personal statement is another uh, issue I often come across. Um, again, we don't want the reader to be getting frustrated trying to find the answers to your questions, so make sure you keep it really well organized. And then finally, uh, not editing your personal statement. So um, make sure you edit it multiple times. Make sure you get your friends and family to take a look at it for you. Um, you can work with me and I can help you find any errors. Um, yeah, you just want to make sure that your personal statement is really well written and it doesn't have little spelling and grammar mistakes. Okay, so um, let's talk about some next steps here. Um, because if you're applying, I have a bunch of resources that I just want to make sure that you are aware of. Um, so the first thing is, um, if you're not already on my email list, I would suggest that you sign up for my email list. Um, I did see a question. Uh, someone was asking what my website is. I'm just going to type it in here. 
It's mswhelper.com. Um, so if you go there, you can go anywhere on my page and you can get on my email list. Um, when you join, I have a whole bunch of tips and resources that'll be automatically sent to you over the next couple of weeks as you are starting to write your personal statement. Um, if you're interested in working with me, um, my main service is editing and critiquing your personal statement. So what'll happen is you'll send your personal statement to me and I'll provide you feedback and help you improve it and make it the best it can be. Like I mentioned, if you order before midnight tonight, you're also going to get a copy of my digital guide for free. Um, so if you're interested, I definitely would take advantage of that. Um, and then I also have a new service that um, I just started this year, which is my guided writing workshop. So over the years, I've had a lot of people ask me, um, like, if to help them with the writing process. And the answer to that has always been no, because I wasn't sure how to do that in a way that was like ethical and feasible. Um, but because I've gotten so many inquiries, I've created this workshop as a way for us to work together to help you create like a rough draft for your personal statements. So what I've done is I have pre-recorded everything that I know about writing statements. You're gonna watch all those videos. And then I have a bunch of worksheets that we're gonna work on together. And at the end of that, we are going to, or I'm going to send you a report of everything that you did and give you some suggestions on how I think you could, like things I think you can add, things I think you did well, things like that. Um, thank you to the person who added in the, um, my website there. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Okay. Okay, so we know that a master of social work is going to allow you to increase your income and open doors in your career. Um, we also know that applying to grad school is a huge investment of both your time and your money. So I want you to consider what is the cost of choosing not to work with me? Um, by not working with me, you run the risk of maybe not putting your best foot forward in the personal statement um, and getting waitlisted or possibly even rejected from the schools that you're applying to. It has been an honor the last couple of years to help people go from stressed and worried about their application to confident and submitting their application with ease. So on this slide, I did just add a few reviews of some past people that I've worked with and what they've said. Um, and, you know, one thing I like, I know that I am able to help people and provide a lot of value. And honestly, my services cost less than a pair of yoga pants from a certain brand or um, some eyelash extensions. So that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> so with that, um, I'm going to take a look and see if any questions have come through. We have a few minutes left together. So let's see if you have a question, um, can you add it to the end here? Are we writing in first person or third? Um, I would say you want to write in first person because it is a personal statement. Um, so you wanna be talking like, this is my goal, this is my experience, and this is what I want to do. Um, can we have access to the, your PowerPoint? I see, okay, I see a few people have asked that. So um, yeah, I can definitely send out the PowerPoint at the end of this, um, for sure. Where's the website? Everybody, uh, okay. Yeah, so it's mswhelper.com. I'm just gonna add it again to the end here. What's a great idea for an intro sentence? So uh, I usually recommend adding some sort of a hook, like something to um, like kind of get the reader interested in, in um, your personal statement or you can start your personal statement with that elevator pitch that I was talking about. So, you know, right off the bat saying like, like just giving the reader everything that they need to know about you. Any other questions before we wrap up today? Yeah, Michelle, uh, what has the rate of acceptance been like for people that are working with you? Um, that's hard. I'm not entirely sure because not everybody reaches back out to me after. Um, so 
that's actually something that's on my list to do is to go back and like connect with everybody I've worked with since I started this in 2018. Um, okay. What I can say is that um, I, every single person that I've worked with has at least felt like come back and said that they felt more confident about their application and that I was able to point out things that um, that they didn't think of or they didn't consider. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so did you go to like a master's of social work program too then? Oh, absolutely. Yes. I applied to several schools across Canada um, and even one in the U.S. as well. I live in a border city, so. Okay, great. Yeah. So yeah, I've, I've been, I've been through it myself and also um, like okay. I've helped people with so many different schools. <laughs> Okay, great. And just my last question too, um, like in terms of working with you, like what does that look like? So I looked on your website and like it says we can send you our application, like it says we can, um, there's like the resume package as well that you will edit and everything like that. Um, do we, uh, do we also like, is there a video call or like something like that? Or what does it look like? So there, um, yeah, when you choose to work with me, what you'll do is you will send me your personal statement and I will provide feedback in the comments and send it back to you. Um, mm -hmm. And if you have questions, we'll collaborate over email and, um, and yeah, like, so there's no, there's no Zoom call per se, but um, definitely it's like a collaborative process. Okay. And then in terms of working together, like how many applications will you review for like like say we're applying to like three schools, does it count for only like one school or? Yeah, so that's a good question. So uh, yeah, oftentimes people are applying to multiple schools. I usually suggest that you start with one because I find that there's a lot of overlap between the different schools. And when I provide feedback on one, most people will say like, yeah, I think like I can kind of, you know, make this work for all the schools. Um, okay. That said, if you want me to take a look at your other applications, um, I will do so for a reduced fee. Um, so when you work with me, I'll send you a coupon code so that you can get it for, I think it's it's about 50% off, um, just based on the fact that, you know, I think there's usually a lot of overlap, so I'm not providing as much, as many comments in your like next personal statements. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yes, you can definitely email me if you have more questions. Um, should you add citations to your personal statement? Uh, yes, uh, that's a great way to show like your research skills. Um, and I, yeah, if you go to my website, you can read more about that. Um, so we get the coupon. So if you sign up today, I will email the digital guide to you today. Um, in terms of pricing and like what my services look like, um, definitely go to my website, um, which I'm pasting again here. Um, oh, there we go. So yeah, you can see everything there, but yeah, if you have any questions, you can send me an email. Okay, so we are just about at the end of our time together today. So I am going to wrap up. If you have any other questions, um, definitely send an email. I'm going to send out a follow-up email today um, where I'll send you the slides and some other things around next steps. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, thank you so much for attending today. And I hope that this has been helpful and kind of given you some um, ideas or guidance on next steps.